In a time before time, humans were created, and it was horrible, like really shit. But in 2005, one of mankind's greatest achievements was brought forward that made up for all of the wars, destruction of ecosystems, and worst of all, those people who stick gum underneath things. That's right, I'm calling you out, you motherfucker. The Adventures of Shark Boy and Lava Girl. I'm sure you've all heard of Spy Kids, the trilogy of film- Oh wait, quadrilogy. Almost forgot about that fourth one. But to be honest, who didn't? Someone put that on YouTube! It was the original with those freaking thumb things. Spy Kids 2, which foreshadowed the existence of Spy Kids 3. Do you think God stays in heaven because he too lives in fear of what he's created? And Spy Kids 3, which to date still contains one of the best characters and scenes in cinematic history. All of which were directed by Robert Rodriguez, the same director of very adult movies such as Sin City and Machete. What the hell? But perhaps his greatest achievement comes in the form of Sharkboy and Lava Girl, a much less talked about movie when compared to Spy Kids that I'm disappointed hasn't been memed to absolute shit yet. Hollywood is a very interesting place. Movies can be extremely risky investments with a lot of money being thrown around, and so it's often dangerous to do anything ambitious or really different. And in a world where making original movies aren't as well favoured or as profitable as making more Fast and Furious movies, it amazes me that someone gave them 35 million dollars to make this movie. Where did that money go? It grossed about 70 million at the box office, which apparently is not enough to warrant a sequel, even though I'm still waiting, by the way. Anyway, let's just watch the damn movie. The movie opens with a quote from one of the film's own fictional characters. What? We begin with Sharkboy's origin, which is just as incredibly stupid as you would think. The shittiest render of a storm I've ever seen tears apart the research lab where Sharkboy and his father were stationed, studying and caring for sharks. Specifically sharks, apparently. Who... can talk. It's Sharkboy. Don't take a bite out of him, boys. He's a friend. Yeah, I'm not sleeping tonight. He is then raised by them and trained in the way of the shark. That is an actual quote from the movie, shark. yes. Always go forward. Ah, get away from me! This somehow makes him grow fins and gills. We're like five minutes into the movie and I already feel for the writers and their families. After Max meets Sharkboy, he kidnaps him and keeps him trapped within a watery prison where he will swim for his entertainment before Lava Girl just shows up one day and then they piss off. This is all revealed to be a kid named Max telling a story to his class, which explains why the origin stories make about as much sense as anything 10 year olds come up with. And then he is bullied relentlessly. Jesus, what did the whole class just have those ready? You can tell Max is really important because he's not even on the poster. We were supposed to tell true stories. Okay, let me tell you about this little shit here. Linus. You, you know that feeling of when your headphones get caught around a door and having them nearly assassinate you? This kid is the physical embodiment of that feeling. And unfortunately for us, he is very important to this film's very deep and complex plot. There's no such thing as Lava Girl. Jeez, even the teacher's bullying Max over this. <laughs> Linus then proceeds to roast Max in front of the entire class without the teacher intervening. Probably enjoying himself too much. Before the bell goes off. Linus. Oh wow, that's convenient. After class, Max runs into Linus and his gang with mullet over here, holy shit. And then the most intense movie chase scene of all time begins. In your burst your bubble dream, boy. <laughs> Even this kid's trying to get involved. Does Linus run like the whole playground? Is, is he the kingpin of the fourth grade? All he has to do is point and these kids do what he says. Linus must have their parents hostage in his basement or something. Unfortunately for Max, Linus and his gang eventually gets their hands on his dream journal after he forgets about his only weakness, his balls. <laughs> Everyone in the entire movie is telling Max that he should stop dreaming about his made-up DeviantArt OCs, and so he slips into a depressed state. The grass was dead anyway. I wish I was the grass. I wish I could just escape this loser world and go to Planet Jewel. Me too, man. M me too. Also, he literally lives across the road from the school. That's incredible. And when Max returns to school, we bear witness to one of the greatest scenes in cinema history. He ruined my dream journal! I did not! Mr. Electric, send him to the principal's office and have him expelled! You're in my class, not the other way around! I know everything! And you know nothing! 
I have no words. It's just... It's beautiful. And then suddenly, a giant tornado appears. And instead of evacuating, the teacher just bails on the kids. Yeah, this is a school we're talking about, I'm not surprised. But as it turns out, it's not just any tornado, it's a Sharknado. A Shark Boy Nado. And Lava Girl Nado. Yeah, this joke is better in my head. Shark Boy and Lava Girl appear. And they head to Planet Drool, which apparently is dying, and Max has to save it. And from here on out, this movie is like 99% green screen. I don't even know what the 1% would be. You know those weird 4D experience virtual reality things at like every fair ever? That's what this entire movie is. And yes, for those who still don't know, Shark Boy is played by Taylor Lautner of Twilight fame. Which explains why they gave him a costume where it's impossible for him to tear his shirt off. We then get to meet our villain. This... This is my sleep paralysis demon. And then they fight! I see this face in my nightmares. And so after getting their ass whipped, they are banished to the Dream Graveyard. Most of the film from here on out is just them going around the planet and this movie meeting its 3D effects quota. See, much like Spy Kids 3D, Sharkboy and Lava Girl was heavily marketed as being a 3D movie, and it panders toward that ever so blatantly. There are so many scenes in this movie where it's just shit going towards the camera, and as someone who hasn't worn 3D glasses in about 87 years, it gets pretty obnoxious very quickly. During this sequence is also a musical number that would put even high school musical to shame, which, yes, is what I rank musical numbers against. There's no other songs in the movie. This is just there. And man, such deep and thought-provoking lyrics. To be fair, it does sound like a 10-year-old wrote it. And then, another epic fight scene. And Shark Boy goes to freaking berserker mode. After escaping from Mr. Electric's copy-pasted army, the trio heads to the ice castle to get the crystal heart. Yeah, that's... That's a thing, apparently. Despite, like, a strong majority of this movie's dialogue being exposition, I still have no idea what the hell is going on. Although, according to IMDb, the plot for this movie was concocted by the director's seven-year-old son, which explains... a lot. But then Mr. Electric appears and freaking kills them, and we meet the real villain of the movie. I'm much... God... Cool. God damn it. This is Minus. He reminds me of someone. Our heroes are too weak. Minus is just, just too cool. They get captured and it looks like all hope is lost. Until, hey shark boy, come over. My parents aren't home. I can't, I'm trapped in this cage. But he ruined my dream journey. <laughs> They steal back the dream journal after escaping until Lava Girl immediately destroys it. God damn it. To do that though, they had to come across a sleeping Minus. Couldn't you just... I mean, his neck's like right there. Just give it a little snap, please. Just, just kill him. Then they try and fail to get the Crystal Heart. And Lava Girl... Well... Nothing of importance was lost. Then they meet the Ice Princess, one of the girls in Max's class, who just gives them the heart, and then they use it to go and fight the darkness. Well, that was easy. But Lava Girl's still frozen. How are they gonna... Oh, yeah, okay, that works too. What? Ah. You know, what? As in a measure of electrical power. What? Ah. To all the amateur filmmakers out there, your cool idea will never get made. But this did. This did. And then Sharkboy dies. Can he survive down there? Nope, he's dead. I must join him. They're dead. That's it. Movie's over. We, we can all go home now. Just to be sure though, they throw her into a volcano. Oh, hey, wait, wouldn't that- And just like that, Max activates God Mode and Thanos snaps the ocean and gets ready to throw down with Linus. And now it's time for the epic final battle. Oh. <laughs> then they engage in a game of Scribblenauts as they try and best each other in whatever G-rated thing they can choose to attack with. If only Max could dream up like an AK-47 or a terminal disease, that'd, that'd teach him. <laughs> and meanwhile, Sharkboy summons his army of models from the PlayStation 1. King of the Ocean. What the fuck? And then Mr. Electric gets torn apart by sharks. What do you say? Linus. 
Wait, holy shit, that's been Linus the whole time? And then they become friends and he learns the error of his ways and everyone's friends and Mr. Electric is still being violently mutilated. We then learn that it's all been a dream the whole time. Except the tornado was real. That part was real. Okay. And the kids still haven't been evacuated for some reason. What is this movie? Except Mr. Electric somehow survived. Almost like those sharks didn't have teeth for some reason. And also Sharkboy and Lava Girl are real now. And then in top 10 anime redemption arcs, Linus goes to fight Mr. Electric. Yeah, that's about what I expected, you piece of shit. Max gives the Heart of Ice back to the Ice Princess's real life counterpart, and she freaking kills Mr. Electric, like for real this time. No resurrections this time. And then everyone lives happily ever after. And also, did any of that at the end actually happen or not? What was a dream and what wasn't? This is like inception levels of confusing. So dream a better dream than work to make it real. Yes. Upon rewatching it for the first time in like ever. I'd have to say that Fireboy and Water Girl is just not quite up to the standard of Spy Kids 3D, which had me laughing so hard I nearly coughed up my lungs. We never even got an email address. This movie has its highlights, what with the dream journal scene making the entire thing worth it alone, Shark Boy's incredible music number, or just everything about Mr. Electric, but overall I think it's just a lot more forgettable. Except for this. This will haunt my dreams for the rest of time. Ah, dreams. I see what they did there. Please help, I can't sleep. It's still worth a watch though, even if it's just to count how many times they say dream. Which is 118 times, by the way. Also, just wanted to shout out this hilarious recreation of the dream journal scene by channel Ominously Jazzy Eggs. That's the name. Please go watch it, it's so great. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out my Twitter, send anything to my PO box if you want your package open in a video, and be sure to check out my second channel, Button Smashers. Goodbye, and sweet dreams.